What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're looking at how to solve multiplication using grid method. Let's go. Okay, so the two things we're going to remember today. Step one, we're going to partition our numbers and we're going to learn what that word partition means. And then step two, we're going to solve each section of our grid. So what does partitioning our number mean? Well, we have the question 32 multiplied by 53. And at the moment, that's a really difficult question because 32 and 53 is very hard to see how they multiply. But what we can do is we can understand that 32 is actually just the 30 and a 2. And 53 is the same as saying 50 and a 3. So we have just partitioned our number. We've broken it down into its tens and its ones. And now what we can do is put this partition number into our grid so that we can then solve the individual parts of the multiplication before adding it back together. Whoa, 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 just stop right there a second. Let's just pause this video for a moment. Have you subscribed? If not, you're doing me a big favor by pressing that subscribe button. So please like and subscribe this video if you're learning something from it. Let's get back to the video. So let's first draw a grid. And the way I like to remember how to draw it is if we have two digits times two digits, then we need to draw two lines by two lines. And then I'm gonna put my multiplication sign in this corner. And then at the top, I'll have 30 and two. Remember how we got our 32 by partitioning 32. And then down the left hand side, 50 and three. Now what we've done is we have made up this square. Now all we need to think is that this box here is the product of 30 times 50. Then this second box over here is the product of two multiplied by 50. Then our third box down here is three multiplied by 30. And then the last one, three multiplied by two. So let's begin. And let's start with box number one, where the question actually reads 30 multiplied by 50. Well, that still looks pretty hard, doesn't it? If we have the question 30 times 50, I imagine we can't do that in our heads. Well, don't worry, there is a trick. The nice thing about grid method and the great thing about multiplication is that if we have a number with a zero in it, we can call it a happy number. I call it happy because we can draw these little happy smiley faces in them. And what we can do is we can temporarily ignore them and then put them back in our answer. And for our geniuses out there, the ones that really want to understand what we've done there, is we are taking away these zeros, which is going to make this question 100 times smaller. So instead of 30 times 50, we're doing 3 times 5. But then we'll put the zeros back and make it 100 times bigger for our answer. Now I can do 3 times 5, and 3 times 5 equals 15. But remember, we ignored these two zeros, so I'm going to now put them back. So 15 becomes 1,500. So the answer to the first box is 1,500. Okay, second question, which is 50 times 2. And again, I imagine sometimes 50 times 2 can be quite hard to work out. So we can do the same trick. We can ignore the 0 and do 5 times 2, which equals 10, and then put back our 0, so we get 100. So my answer to 50 times 2 is 100. Box 3's question is 3 times 30. And again, 3 times 30 might be quite hard for people to work out, although actually some people can see that that's 90. But let's see if we get the same answer. So we think it's 90. Let's check. Let's do 3 times 3 by getting rid of the 0. That equals 9. Put back our 0. Good. We get 90 as well. And last but not least, we have the question three times two. And three times two, we don't need to do any working out here. Three times two is six. Awesome, but are we finished? No, because what we've done so far is we have worked out the individual parts of this question. We've got four individual parts. We multiplied 50 times 30, 50 times two. Then we did three times 30 and three times two. So we've got the four individual parts but we need to now add it back together. So my answers were 1,500, 100, 90, 
and six. And you can see I'm just using column method to add this up. So in my ones column, I have zero, 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 and six, which leaves me with six. In my tens, I have zero, zero, and nine, gives me a nine. In my hundreds, I have five and a one, which is six. And in my thousands, I have just a one. So therefore, my final answer is 1,696. Awesome. Let's show you how fast we can do this using this method. 62 times 41, I'd separate as 62, 41. Remembering that this box here is the product of 60 and 40. 60 and 40 sounds horrible, so I'm going to do 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. How many zeros did I just ignore? 1, 2, so I need to put back my 1, 2. So the answer to 60 times 40 is 2,400. My next box says 40 times 2. Well, I can see that is actually going to be 80. Now I'm down to 1 times 60, which is 60. 1 times 2 is 2. Add it all back together, 2,400, 80, 60, and 2. Add it all up, and I get an answer of 2,542. Simple and fast. Let's look at what to remember. First, you've got to partition the number. Then you're going to solve each section of the grid individually. Remembering that happy numbers can be forgotten for a moment and then put back in the answer. Happy numbers being our zeros. Don't forget to add it all up at the end. I see so many people that think they've finished grid method when they've just finished the grid. Don't forget you've got to add it back up. Okay, your turn. Can you try and work out this question? 45 times 64. Press pause on the video now. Take your time, find a bit of paper to work on and put your answer in the comment section. I'm going to try and mark them all. And there you go, guys. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, think about subscribing to the channel. But for now, guys, I'm going to say peace out, and I'll see you in another video.